This is how to get rid of your crusty old bushings and replace them with uniballs. I'm so f***ing popular, dude. Sorry, it's Brendan. I bought this BMW and I've been wanting to refresh the rear end and replace all the bushings with bearings. At FDF we have cup kits that we can weld into BMW trailing arms and replace the bushings with uniball bearings. So we're going to have these cup kits on our website and what you'll get with this kit is four bearing cups, four bearings, four snap rings, and eight spacers. So obviously I got the bushing out already but how I got them out was pretty simple. Uh, I just got this, this is like a ball joint press tool off of Amazon. It works the, great for bushings too, especially these little ones. So what I used was a little socket, a little receiver cup, and the C-clamp tool. Kind of smashed it all in there, tightened it down, and then it just fell out. So like that. Or you can just hit on it really hard with a hammer. But now that the bushing's out, we can move on to the bearing cup. This gets welded into your trailing arm like so. We're going to put a bead around the outside here and around the outside there. You can use a MIG welder, which is the easiest way probably. You can use a TIG welder, and you can even use a stick welder. What prep does the knuckle need? Okay, great question. It's like any angle grinder. Do the flat surfaces here. So we're gonna want a clean, shiny surface for the metal to weld to. Just imagine the bead is gonna go and fill this corner right here. So we're gonna want this surface smooth and flat, and I'm gonna clean this inner surface too with this little drum sander and uh, that'll just make sure that everything's clean. But this is cast steel, so it's porous and like some impurities will, will come up if you're TIG welding it, like I'm gonna do. And you'll see that in the bead, it's kind of like wishy-washy. So clean it the best you can. It's still gonna puke some shit up, but if you MIG weld it, it's fine. You can probably weld it like, like this. This is sandblasted, as you can see, but it's still a little rusty because it's so humid over here that it, it, it flash rusts really easily. You don't have to sandblast your trailing arm. Blast off the rust with a little angle grinder like I showed you. And that's, that's great. That'll get the surface clean and good enough to weld these cups in. So let's weld some cups. So I have the bearing cup, it has two sides, one with a shoulder and one that accepts a snap ring. You're gonna take the bearing once you have this mounted on your car and you're gonna press this bearing in. And we wanna think about which way we wanna have this shoulder and which way we wanna press this bearing in. I thought that on the car, it'd be the easiest to press the bearing in forward, like from the front of the car. Like imagine this is the front of the car because you're gonna have your, your your giver cup, you're going to have your receiver cup, and you're going to have your through screw, and you're going to be rattling on it with an impact and forcing that bearing in. I just imagine like, uh, you have the most room on the front of this car, so I'll press both bearings in from the front. So I just, just want to make sure that you have the shoulder facing the, the same way on the top and bottom. The bushings in the car were centered in this knuckle, so I'm going to center the bearing in this knuckle. I'm just gonna put it in there and make sure I have equal distance from this shoulder to that shoulder. So I put th three little tacks on each side of the bearing cup, so six tacks in total. I did that to prevent the bearing cup from warping and shifting as I'm welding. So if you don't put enough tacks on there, the thing's gonna move around while you're welding. So more tacks, the better. Yeah, that looks pretty centered. I'm gonna weld it up. You ready for me to weld it up? Yeah, weld it up. I'm welding it up. Yeah.
getting electrocuted. This is a completed trailing arm. We are gonna press these bearings in, but before that, we're gonna clean out the surface. Now that we cleaned out the bearing cup, uh, I put a little bit of oil on it, and we're gonna use this really simple tool to press in the new bearing. It is just a five inch half 20 bolt, so five inches long, half 20 in thread pitch. I got a little 32 mil shallow socket as the receiver cup and a 27 mil shallow socket as the, the giver cup. Little nut. All you're gonna do is uh, impact it in. Gotta make sure it's straight. That's the most important thing when push, pushing these bearings in, making sure that it's straight. Cause you can get these bound up pretty good and they don't wanna go in. So when it's straight, it just goes in easily. And that's done. You're gonna take your snap ring. Boom. Too easy. Oh, I shouldn't dance on camera. Now that you have your snap ring in, your bearing in, slap the spacers in and it's ready for an arm. Then you're gonna throw the bearing into the bottom part of the trailing arm. Same process, Bob's your uncle. Arm goes on. Now you got solid bearings in your rear trailing arm. All right, Jack, let's get rid of this garbage rear lower control arm and put a sick FDF one on. Why did I put my hands up like that? Let's get all the parries. We don't safe around here. What I'm doing right here is assembling rear lower control arms and rear upper control arms for the BMW E46 and 36. What is it, Acura Honda stuff? Oh. Five likes, five likes on the video. This stuff is drifting with the Honda Rosation What the f five likes? Yeah, you five should, likes? How many likes do you think our video gets? Okay, so this is everything finished up. It looks pretty snazzy. I showed you what it looks like with all the FDF arms. We got the uppers and the lowers. Everything is available on our website now. The bearing cup kicks and the arms. Thanks for watching. Check out our website, grab some merch, grab a skateboard, grab some BMW stuff. I don't know what I'm saying now. Let's go.